Welcome everyone to this episode of the 929 English Podcast. And welcome back as always to Rachel Sharansky Danziger. Thank you. Today, we continue our conversations about love stories in the parsha. Now, Rachel, the last through few parshiot have been filled with love stories. Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Rachel, and Yaakov and Leah. This week, though, where's the love story? So it's a hidden love story. Well, first of all, what we're watching here is the consequences of the previous love story, the love story of Rachel and Yaakov and all the complication it involved, uh, had involved in it. But also what we're watching here in a sense, um, while not a love, a romantic love of a man for his wife is a love story. It's the love of a father for his son. In truth, if we go back, the first time we hear the word love as a description of a relationship between people in Genesis, it is to describe a father's love for his son. And back then it was when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son whom he loved. And what we're watching here is an echo almost of that story because here again, we see a father who loves his son, but whose love in a sense portends disaster for this very child. Um, when you talk about love from father to son, and of course, you know, hearkening back to the first word of Ashe, the first term, Asher Ahavta, for Avraham and Yitzchak. But here, Yaakov expresses his love for Yosef in a very strange way by buying him or by acquiring for him a ketonet pasim, a multicolored tunic or coat. What do you make of the fact that the love is expressed in that way? It's interesting. It's not only that it's expressed this way, it's also that the Parsha really highlights that point because it places the kutonet in the middle of these two verses that start by describing Yaakov's love for Yosef and end by describing the hatred that Yosef's brothers felt to him. So somehow the garment really plays a pivotal role here and the emotional drama we're watching. And the question is why? And I think that perhaps the answer lies in what we see later in the Parsha because garments make their appearance in three other key moments in the Parsha. And if we look carefully, we can see that the way garments are used in all those key moments is the same. Three times we will watch someone use a piece of clothing for a power play to somehow assert their power over someone else and to deceive them. First, we will see the brothers tearing the very same multicolored garment that their brother wore, and then dipping it in blood after they sold said brother into slavery, disempowering him completely, dipping this garment into blood and sending it to their father to deceive him into thinking his son, Yosef, his beloved son, was uh, eaten by a wild animal. The next time we see it is when Tamar, Yehuda's daughter-in-law, uses a disguise um, to assert, to, it's not really assert her power, it's append the power relationship that exists between her and him. He controls her fate. He's not letting her marry his third son. She wants to have children. So she uses the garment of a prostitute to get Yehuda to impregnate her without his knowledge, without his uh, conscious consent. Once again, creating a power play and a deception. And the third time is when Potiphar's wife uses Yosef's garment that he left in her hand when he was escaping her attempted seduction to lie and pretend as if he tried to rape her and again disempower him by making her husband who favored Yosef as the head of his slaves, the first among slaves, however grand that is, um, before that, um, to send him into prison. So once and twice and thrice, we see garments used in this way. It really reminds us that the word for closing in Hebrew, beged, comes from the same root as the word for gita, betrayal. And it also makes us look back at this garment of Yosef, at the garment that Yaakov gave as a sign of love and ask ourselves, does it, meet the, does it fit the same pattern? Is this also a power play? Is this also an act of deception? And horrifyingly, 
on one level at least, it is part of a power play. Because even though Yaakov is using it as a mark of favor and not against Yosef, not to disempower Yosef in any way, he's not turning him into a slave, he's not turning him into a dupe, he's not turning him into a prisoner. But even though it's used with the best of intentions here, what it does is it reveals to Yosef and to his brothers that there is a power inequality in their household and that one of them is raised above the rest. Ironically, this is the one piece of clothing in the parsha that doesn't lie. It speaks the truth. It's just a very, very painful truth. And the truth is that Yaakov doesn't love everybody equally or doesn't even bother pretending or doesn't even bother trying to love all his sons equally. And this is so where what, the trouble begins. So what you really have here, Rachel, I mean, when you talk about love stories in the parasha, is that sometimes the truth about relationships or the truth about love can't be expressed between the people. Somehow we don't have the ability. Sometimes words don't express the true feeling. Sometimes you need something else. And in this case, it's a piece of clothing to actually identify the true feelings, which is really, you know, fascinating. And that's, you know, maybe why the Ketonet Pasim became so popular, not just because what's a multicolored coat doing in the parsha, but because it really expresses the true feelings between Yaakov and Yosef and Yaakov and the, and the other brothers in a way somehow that language doesn't have the ability to do. Yeah, in a, in a very tangible and indisputable way, but in a very tragic way also. I mean, imagine what it must have felt like for the brothers at that moment. Imagine what it felt like for yourself also. What did he do to him to be favored like that above his brother? It's not a, it's not, it's, it's a hard, difficult and tragic situation, especially when we see where it led. And it, it's actually very interesting because I feel like we're talking in these in this uh, series about love in general, not just about the Parsha, but love in general. And perhaps the warning that this particular Parsha gives us is that we need to be very, very careful when we love, not to allow our love to be entangled in power plays, not to allow it to be uh, expressed in ways that create hard feelings uh, or that distort the distort uh, the harmony within a family that that we have to be careful not all expressions lead somewhere good and in truth it's it's interesting because we've already seen this juxtaposition between clothes and deception and power inequality and even exile because here's this here's the truth the truth is that with this garment with this favoritism of Yaakov we're starting the road towards our exile in Egypt this is where it's going and we've already seen that before We've seen that in the very first instance in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, where clothes were used at all. That is, after the sin, the original first sin, when Adam and Chava ate the forbidden fruit, they noticed that they're naked and they felt ashamed, as they didn't before, and they created clothes to cover their nudity. Not only are they trying to hide their flesh, then when God re reveals himself to them, they try to hide themselves from him, they try to give excuse, they try to hide their shame in more way than one. And from this moment of closing and deception um, comes their punishment. And their punishment is first and foremost, a power inequality. God's curse to Chava, to Eve, is that she will desire her husband, but he will dominate her, he will rule over her. And then of course that is followed by an exile from Eden. So in a sense, by shaping the whole story of what happens between Yaakov and Yosef and the brothers around a garment, the Tanakh beautifully, amazingly and horrifyingly um, echoes the first original drama of sin and punishment. Almost it's as if it's casting what Yaakov is doing with Yosef um, as a new original sin, as the original sins that will start us on a very, very, very difficult road of pain and estrangement and uh, ultimately exile. Um, 
it's a fascinating interpretation and it's you know it's really um, wonderful or you know thought provoking to take it back to the garden of eden and to think about clothing the first introduction of clothing and how it really the theme is the same so i would say rachel what we really see as we continue studying love in the parsha is that in a sense the story evolves and the story develops. And just the way stories, as they always do, evolve and develop and they become more complex. So the relationships become more complex. And here that complexity is reflected in the fact that sometimes it's not the conversation or the immediate relationship, but rather the way that clothes reflect that relationship that really takes the love story to the, the love story and the challenges of that love story to the next level. Thank you so much. Um, we hope everybody enjoys the parsha, enjoys the challenges of the parsha, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. <laughs>